Welcome back to Mark Lee Meets World. I am your host, Mark Levy, and I want to say thank you for tuning in today. We've got a big, fun episode today. If you haven't watched the show before, uh, every week I watch an episode of Boy Meets World with a friend, and we, were, we, we, we talk about it for you. Today we are doing Band on the Run from Season 2, Episode 8. And, of course, if you haven't watched yet, please do so now. You can do that through, like, Disney+, Plus, Daily Motion, Syndication, if that's a thing. You can rent it on like, Apple or whatever. You might, you will enjoy this more if you watch that episode beforehand. So do so now. Great. When we come back, you will see myself and Mary Kwiatkowski talking about Boy Meets World. See you then. All right, and we're back. I am so happy to be here with a guest that I really, really enjoyed having on last season. And she's back again, uh, Mary Kukowski. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm really excited to be back. I had such a great time last time with the with a pretty fun episode. And luckily, we're back with another just fun, like, snappy, quick episode. That's the great thing about watching these compared yeah. to any other podcasting. I was like, man, 22 minutes. <laughs> over and done it's so nice i mean it's not like riverdale for you where you just watch that and it, it's it's 45 longer. minutes yeah. yeah this is well and this also it's just so quick like there's so many scenes in this episode that are you know 10 to 30 seconds long and then boom next scene i'm like wow yeah. i forgot how quick this is my you know it's especially, just so nice especially like this episode yeah so yeah uh, we did Bane on the Run, which is season two, episode eight. It aired originally November 11th, 1994, directed by David Trainer, of course, and written by uh, Mark Blutman and Howard Buskang, uh, who ha- made their writing debut two episodes before, I believe. Uh, the, the greatest last names ever, uh, Blutman and Buskang. Uh, episode, the plot of the episode is Corey and Sean kind of start a band, and Alan has a band reunion. <laughs> For, for once, it's actually like a pretty concise episode. There's really just band related plots. Like Eric doesn't have his own plot or anything like that. It's kind of, kind of. Is all Eric only the episode for one scene? Uh, he's in one scene and in the very, very end. Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. He, yeah. get, he, he gets the Morgan role this episode. Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I also about this episode before we get started is like it's an episode where there's a lot at school, but there's no teaching involved. Like it's. Yeah. There's there's nothing. It's just hallway scenes. It really is just like trying to be like, "Hey, Corey, you're hitting other kids." If you need saying like, off, like talking awkwardly to children, uh, but <laughs> yeah, which made me even more happy because, um, well, I don't want to. I'll save it till the end because I have yeah. some related school related things related to my MVP of the episode. Okay, I'm, I'm excited. I'm just so happy. Whenever whenever I'm on the show, I'm very very happy. One of those guests, I'm always like, "Yes, please." Every time that you want on, you can be on. <laughs> uh so yeah let's get started to stop the episode the episode starts with a girl walking past Corey, and Corey chases her and to ask her the date to the dance and she's like sorry my grandma is sick um my and, favorite part of this sequence yeah. is the fact that he's like the way he says it and he starts the episode you don't even need any context you know that this is the fifth sixth seventh girl he's <laughs> asked this question to hi my name is Corey. the seventh grade dance is coming up do you want to go with me oh your grandmother's sick hmm figures <laughs> And then, like, literally, the next thing you see is something like, and why is everyone's grandma sick? And, like, it's like that grandma's coughing up lung, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> like, uh, oh, the funniest one to me was um, I wrote down the, I believe that Corey is blamed for grandma's death. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that one's already dead, but uh, but they blamed yeah. me. <laughs> so we have an appearance uh, almost immediately in this episode, uh, play, uh, playing senior Adam Scott, who is. Uh, playing Griff, I think, starting next season, if I'm not mistaken. But, yeah, Adam Scott in uh, Proto-Griff is in this episode. Um, and Yeah. I thought it was pretty cool. Like, oh, like, oh that's cool. It's, like, semi-Griff, but not cool. Because, like, the hair is different. And, right. Yeah. But, yeah, I was, I was looking up another list today that was, like, one of those a bunch of people who had early appearances on Boy Meets World that went on uh-huh. to become famous actors, and he was one of them as well, so... Uh, but in a different role here. A lot of people had just like little quick, little quick one-shot roles. Yeah, like he's credited as senior, not not Griff Senior. Yeah. Uh, and he literally is like, hey kids, can you like watch our guitars while I go to the bathroom? And then every girl's all of a sudden like they're just all over Corey and Sean, like, you play music? <laughs> now I, I don't know what it was about me growing up, but 
at no point when I was in middle school or high school did I feel like oh the the band people because I think there's there's a very fine difference between being like I I was in the band like I was Uh in jazz band I played the saxophone I was in the band and maybe it was just the fact that my my dad played guitar that I was it wasn't like it's fine I'm not nothing against them but I wasn't like oh people in a band (laughs) like yeah people play music all right yeah like for me my dad is a musician so I was like told like try to learn an instrument uh, well, not told, but like I was encouraged to. Mm-hmm. And I try to learn drums and I realized quickly I don't have rhythm for drums. Like I don't have rhythm. I'm, I'm that cliche Jewish nerdy kid uh, that has no rhythm. And like I, I understand, like it's like I get the quirks of wanting to be in a band because like hell yeah. But it's also like I get, yeah. Like it's, I was, I'm a theater kid. So like, that's where my brain always will be like, I rather just like look at a play or something instead of like yeah. carry around a guitar case. But you know, this is bringing back a memory actually of the entire time I was from sixth to eighth grade, the whole time I was in middle school, a friend of mine and myself, we spent a lot of time, mostly at lunch or on the school bus, coming up with band names of if we formed a band, what it would be Same called. Here. Like yeah. we were like, you'd be the drummer and you'd be the singer. And like we would <laughs> assign roles and come up with names. We never put any effort into actually trying to learn to play those instruments or like yeah. none of us could sing. But I remember we we had a band name which was going to be um shortcut and we were really excited for our band name shortcut. And then and that was, there probably a is a band named that, but like when we were in sixth grade and didn't have access to the internet, really, that was that was peak. I remember I wanted to be a rapper when Eminem came out, <laughs> and I came up with an, a rap name which was Eight. Oh, uh, it, nice. Uh, two, oh my god, it's like two thousand. Like, of course, I would, so I would be like that. But like, it was, it was really short lived. Like, I realized my all my skills are only for not music. <laughs> 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 yeah um but, but yeah the girls the girls are all over sean and Corey, and they're like yeah mm, we could do something with this i also love like how for some reason Corey mishears what they the word musician for magician he's like yeah i could pull a rabbit out of a hat and and sean's like, no no musician <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know like that was that was one of the sillier moments here also there's a i have a tv show pet peeve that like normally i think boy meets world is a pretty smart show and doesn't stoop to this level but uh-huh. you know they have to do this kind of thing which is like the girls are standing right there oh you guys are musicians and sean is trying to convey to court like yes we're musicians yeah and they're right there they would be able to hear and those girls would suss out that the, these people are just posing uh the the overhearing not not being able to hear someone talking right next to you is a it, pet peeve. no i understand that like it's like i have a pet peeve like in like living room scenes where there's like four different conversations happening in different parts of the living room and it's like it's a living room you can hear everything no matter what yeah like yeah it's ridiculous uh and then i love the little budding at the end of the scene uh when uh cory and sean like start faking the band um uh, and like then like the the um, uh future griff <laughs> and the other guy come back and they're like oh my god you have band- oh, yeah uh, yeah but roadies yeah roadies. <laughs> exactly that's good we have a little bit of a cory and topanga continuity issues here where he says that he's asked her to every dance since they were five yeah which is it's you know it's one of those when did they have their first kiss was it on the playground was it in the hallway in sixth grade did did he like her before did he know her did they grow up together did they not it goes back and forth and so it's so weird like because like we recently just did the uh, first continuity kiss which was um the uh in the episode where he turned into a werewolf oh yeah um, that's like the first like continuity kiss, but like, because like now it's like they're like sort of like in a relationship, and somebody's just like, to me, it's just that weird girl that I kiss sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. Like it's it's weird because like this is definitely like very early Korean thing and dating. Like they're like they're like definitely like talking at least in this episode in that regard. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah they're yeah. Uh, they they seem to be there's definitely something there especially on the topanga side um yes i mean i, I think Corey's st- still like uh 
oh, I'll probably, I'll probably go to this dance with her, but I figured I might as well try to ask some other people out first. I mean, he's actively pursuing, I, I looked up her name in IMDb, the character name is Sonia. Yeah, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, and yeah, and like, so like, yeah, so uh, Corey and Sean go, go to the Matthews house and Alan uh, like is playing around like his guitar. Yeah, uh, no, Corey is playing the guitar and uh, Alan's like, oh yeah, we used to like play like, I used to be in a band. We were we made protest music, and it was great. And Corey's like, I just want to meet girls. <laughs> yeah, there is this this uh, whole episode has a lot of echoed lines where one character will say something, and then right after another character will say the same thing. We're gonna get that later in the episode with Amy and Topanga saying the same yeah. thing. But here we have Corey being like, "Oh, I just want to meet chicks," and then Amy comes in the door and she's like, "Ah, he wants to meet chicks, does he?" Well, that's why you were in it. Like, she's she's on the ball. She knows what's happening. It's it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, and and you can tell that Amy's a little bit hesitant when Alan starts to get all excited about getting the band back together and yeah stuff like that. And she's like, okay, just remember it was a long time ago. <laughs> I, mean, I do wonder like when this band was happening. It must have been like I wonder if it was happening after he was in the Navy. Or during it's very unclear yeah, about like the timeline like, of the parents' lives. Because it sounds like she was fell in love with him while he was in the Navy, but also like it sounds like he, she fell in love with him while he was making music. Uh so like it's could be both. We don't know. Yeah. Um, and that's okay. I love like we learned the name of his band was called the Tongues, uh, which is such a great band name. Uh my dad was in a band that was really close to becoming famous in the 70s called the Missing Links. Ooh. Um, and, um, like what, what happens with, uh, Alan in this episode mirrors stuff that has happened to my dad in this, like in real life, where mm-hmm. it's like, I wonder if my, one of the bands still alive. I should like call them up and see if we can all hang out. And like, that's like pretty much the start of the, that like, is the B plot. Uh, but it's just, it's so weird watching how similar Alan Matthews is to my dad, um, in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, it, major dad vibes here for for Alan. Yeah. Um, but but hey, at school, Corey and Sean are like, we're gonna just we don't need to be in a band. We just need to pretend we're in a band. We don't need to learn how to play instruments. We'll just carry around empty guitar cases. Which it's <laughs> it's a wonder that they never have anyone ask them to open the case or something. <laughs> Uh, and they just keep refusing to play. Uh, I I love I love Sean being like, why why can't we play and. Corey's like, because we don't know how. <laughs> like, I, I also on, love, Sean. yeah, I, I love how like Corey is like, you, uh, Corey stores uh, like an egg salad sandwich inside of his, uh, inside yeah. his guitar case. There, it's like, it's like, oh, that's not good for anything. Yeah, it's, like, it's his lunchbox. Oh, <laughs> so funny. Um, but then we have a cute moment with Topanga here where she comes up and she's like, hey, I just want to let you know yes, this yeah. guy Jeremy asked me to the dance, but I wanted to check with you first, which I like because they have like this you know, it's clearly a thing. It's a symbiotic relationship with the two of them. They know that they usually go to the dances together. Are there feelings there? Maybe a little bit, but not enough where it's like one person's all in and the other's not or something like that. So it was a, it was a sweet mu- moment I when like he it. tells yeah. her to go. Go it, go with Jeremy. It's fine. It's a really sweet early Corey Topanga, like in a probable relationship moment. Like he looks a little bit sad by it. Like, but he's like, I'm also looking at Sonya this episode. Right. Um, and but like, it, you're right. Like, it's just, it's really cool seeing like the early stages of Corey and Topanga in the show as a couple instead right. of just them, instead of it being like, wow, she's weird. And then being, yeah, and then being normal, which, you know, um, yeah. No, I really like that a lot. Uh, and then, but, but, uh, uh, oh, um, so while that was happening though, uh, Sean tells a great lie about the band. Uh, saying that there's a guy that plays guitar with his teeth. Yeah. Yeah, Sean's <laughs> over here just making their lives harder, talking about all these awesome guys they have in the band, and the girls really want to meet the guys, so Corey and Sean realize they need to hold band auditions, get Please some wipe your feet. in the band. <laughs> yeah, I love the sign, band uh, audition, wipe your feet. It's so On funny. a pizza box, if I'm not mistaken. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a pizza uh, box on the door. Um what did you think about these people who were auditioning? Here? I absolutely loved them. I think that they're perfect, like mid nineties, like stereotypes of like weird types of musicians. Like the fact that the 
that the tuba player and the accordion player play with play the same song. Play the same song. And it's a blues like my mama left me. Bah, bah, bah. He is so <laughs> funny. I love that. I love that bit. And I think this is the first time watching this episode that I realized that they're playing the same song, which yeah. is really funny. Um, there, I think audition like the cliche of the audition scene is mm-hmm. so well known in all forms of media and sometimes it can be kind of annoying when it's like someone's trying out for a play and they start singing and they're like oh is this not a musical what was i watching i was watching zoe 101 recently an early episode of zoe okay. 101 and there's a yeah. similar scene with people auditioning but what i like about this one is that the the moments are so quick they go through each person while being ridiculous still has like like clearly the standout here of most ridiculous are the three monks right who are who are i mean how the hell did monks like find the audition i don't know (laughs) right everyone else is just kind of like random kids from the street who like came in and could theoretically live in the neighborhood you've got it yeah the the kid playing the the horn who personally if they were trying to actually form a band that they could have like the band play and they just kind of pretend to strum along then what they should have gotten with was the jazz singing horn dude because he was pretty good um probably the guy who was drumming all over the place and then the the stop kid yeah the stop kid was really good like he was good yeah and then the, the guy who um actually could play the the um actually the guitar, play the guitar and, and they and were like and then oh, they were, they were like, like no bad. right <laughs> I but mean, I like and, that yeah I mean they chose Thor who just poses right and a kid that liked them but like had like has a prince vibe yeah he was holding a guitar unclear if he knew how to play it or not but he, and he just one. sticks out his tongue he like, sticks out his tongue and he had a really cool like sort of military looking jacket kind of thing on with you know or, yeah like it know, felt like a prince sorry. jacket or like right. the beatles um that like time period i think that uh like Sergeant Pepper, yeah like Sergeant pepper time yeah and i love Corey's line there when he sees him he's like now you gotta have a guy like that <laughs> <laughs> this is a good one um so they get them and they they come up with the with the the one band rule which is no matter how cute the girls are we never ever play <laughs> so funny it's like this band has no talent whatsoever it's just like like i love the fact that thor just poses like i'm just imagining like you go like buying a ticket to see like a concert and like the band just has a person just like like. exactly It's (laughs) it's great and i mean this is clearly because they've realized just pretending to be in a band is good enough they they're not they're not even pretending to play yeah or learn how to play like Based on what happens in the episode, I don't know how long this takes place, whether it's only two days, three days, a whole week, whatever. But if it were me and the prospect of needing to play at some point might come up, I'd be like pulling an all nighter trying to learn two or three songs. Yeah. (laughs) Like even if Uh, it's bad, we'll have a backing track, downloading backing drum tracks, uh uh and then just learning to play like simple guitar riffs. I mean, at least get the Casio. I mean, this is 1994. You have to have a Casio sitting around. Exactly. Nobody press that button. But yeah, you're right. Like it's a thing. Like my brain is like always like panicked. Like if I'm mm-hmm. not prepared for something, and like they're just they're not even, like stressing really. They're just like we're not gonna play music, but we're a band, right? And then like Alan comes in with an amp because yeah. he's like we're going full on like I'm like he's like going through like full on uh, middle age like breakdown type situation, uh, in for like Black Bear word. And also Amy's just like because <laughs> he's a huge amp. So this also really reminded me of my dad because yeah. my dad came home one day when I was pretty young and he he had been really into ping pong for a while when I was really young growing up. And then he kind of got like as good at ping pong as one can get reasonably without like going pro or whatever. So he's like, hey, I kind of maxed out my talent on ping pong. But he had like a really, really fancy paddle I, I don't know, like some okay. kind of ping pong paddle that was somehow really desirable. I don't know if it was like probably a little bit lighter, or, but like I, yeah. I don't know what the story was. But all I know is that he went to like a garage sale and he managed to trade a ping pong paddle that was somehow really good for a, an electric guitar and an amp and like all the equipment that goes with that. And he just came home with like an electric guitar one day. I'm like, okay, what's this about? And he just kind of taught himself how to play guitar and started playing electric guitar. And yeah, I mean, he had a, a band ish they did not perform it was like you perform at 
you, you jam sesh at each other's houses. And then if someone has like a retirement party, you'll play there, but you're not yeah. like, you know, it, it was mostly sort of people he worked with or, or kind of family friends. So, um, but he, you know, it, but this really reminded me that there's like the dad coming home with like a guitar and an amplifier and you're like, and oh, he, what pull, are you gonna do? he also like pulls out his jacket. Like you like pull out like from like storage oh, of yeah. like playing. Uh, and he's got this like a uh, leather tassel jacket with patches, like very clearly very seventies. And like, uh, he's like, Hey, look, your mom's name is in there. And she's like Amy. And he's like Paula and like Brenda. A bunch and, of like, other names. Like, yeah. And she's like, he's like, Oh, it's just a place in, uh, just her mom's place in North Pennsylvania. Like it's just, it's a fun little, like it's a fun little Alan bit right there. Yeah, that's good. And, and really pretty much the only Eric we see in this episode is that he's talking with Eric about the jacket. You're right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's most of it. I was like, I, cause I, I yeah. <laughs> there's not much eric in this episode he is literally no, morgan really. in this episode um and then the next day at school Corey's there kind of dressed like harley he's like dressed exactly like harley and the bullies there like it feels he's got that cool like greaser vibe going on there yeah and- a little bit um so- somewhere in this scene i don't know where it is but somewhere in this episode i wrote down what in the world is sean wearing at one point because sean had a very odd like cardigan on that was like black and white stripe is that the one i, I think that's, up, that's the scene yeah, yes i think that's the yeah scene. he's like yeah. he's like in like a red shirt with like kind of like a like mozzarella neck and like a red right. like a black and white sweater like shirt thingy yeah um but this is this is a really great really great line from Corey when he's talking with the girls they're like oh what are you thinking about he's like the music it's in my head sometimes it drowns out my (laughs) thoughts but then I see you and I know it's our song and the girls walk away and I just love Corey going oh that was a good one (laughs) (laughs) acknowledging the cheesy line and then Turner appears he's like good job Corey and it's like like Turner literally is just wingmanning Corey to a certain extent for the for half of his scenes in this episode because like that's half of his scenes uh but yeah like he's just like yeah Corey, you're taking the music great and then like we get interruption from feeney from the principal's office slash bathroom um because you gotta love that door that door that changes every week i love i think that that's i don't know if that's like intentional or if they've ever said it but i feel like that's something that if I was like a showrunner, I would be doing that kind of thing of like just changing doors on the set because it's it's funny and you hope that people notice kind of. I mean, it literally changes every episode, whether it's needed for the bathroom or if it's needed for Feeney's office. But Feeney comes out of the office. He's like, hey, uh, the, what was the name of the band? Demon Seeds. Pull yes. out of the de- uh And it's just like so funny. Like he's like crossed out the name. Everyone's sad. And... Uh, Feeney offers to listen to play his he calls it Caribbean music but it's clear, I mean it's reggae but like right. a, a, like Caribbean tapes uh, instead um, recorded live at like a hotel like in like <laughs> it was like recorded live at the Holiday Inn in I don't know Florida or something I can't remember where it was but yeah, it, it, was, it was definitely a colder climate for sure I mean a warmer climate uh, just sure. hearing Mr. Feeney say, don't worry, you'll still be able to shake your little booties was just great to hear. This him is say like that. such a great awkward Feeney episode between this and like like before the band plays. I was just, oh yeah. Like it's just oh, yeah. like there's some great Feeney, Feeney doesn't know how to talk to kids at all. Um and then uh what happens immediately after Corey uh literally gets booked because those two girls have, have been all over him and shot the whole episode They're like Corey's got a band and Phoenix like yeah what's the name of it and you literally see Corey like looking through like the Holly C blood drive great name. honestly awesome name for a band should have done blood drive blood drive is so cool like like that's, like, that's like like that's such a perfect like probably hard rock band from like the 90s oh yeah uh sex ed which not as good but still pretty cool I think Right, like sex would be yeah, an interesting maybe, band. I think that would be like, yeah, like a grunge band or emo band, something that's maybe probably not what Corey's uh, demographic yeah. is looking for right here. Although and they then, were going to hire the Demon Seeds, so <laughs> for seventh grade dance, it literally says seventh grade dance on the on the poster. Like, what band <laughs> could possibly be like? You know what's a good gig? Seventh grade dance. Honestly, those guys who end up playing at the oyster shack or whatever it is, like th- that's probably the type of guys you need to be looking for. Yeah, 
Yeah. And then uh, Corey lands on the exit sign. And he's like, the exits. That's what we are. The exits. Um, yeah. So good. And, um, yeah. And yeah. So they get booked. And of course, he has to tell Sean, like, Sean, we uh, we got a gig. He's like, oh, who are the exits? That sounds, <laughs> sounds cool. <laughs> um, and uh, so they go back to Chubby's. And... <laughs> This is uh this is where the other two guys quit. They're like, yeah, yeah we're not, <laughs> we're not. Thor a part of and Prince Junior both were like, bye. Yeah, goodbye. Um, Sean, who has a pretty, he's kind of a dum dum in a lot of this episode. Yeah, they're kind of using him just for like really silly moments. But Sean has another great line where he says, "Okay, don't panic. We'll just play the old hits, none of the new stuff. Just one encore, and we're in the limo." <laughs> and Corey is like, throw a glass of water on him. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I mean, Step out of this. I just somehow like in in Sean's mind, the band's been around for like <laughs> successful for like five years. And yeah. their second album was just terrible. <laughs> they, they like kind of have this vibe throughout a lot of this later part when they start panicking of like, maybe if we just believe enough, we can play. <laughs> like it'll yeah. just happen, right? They do say that literally yeah. when they're like about to have, have to play. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, with the actual uh, people with actual somewhat talent, we've got Alan hanging with his band. Uh, play, are, two of them are, are famous. Two yeah, two, famous two of them. Yeah, uh, um, Mickey Dolenz from the Monkees and Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, and another guy. Uh, I had his name there. It was uh, Billy Vera, who plays Larry. He's there. Yep. Um, but at least one of these people. Uh, I, what's his name? Like Gor- Gordon or Gordy. Oh, Gordy, yeah, Gordy's gonna yeah. Um, come back again later. So he he's got at least one, one if not two more episodes in him. I think. So there's a really funny fact about the character of, of Gordy. He's originally played by Ricky uh, Rick Nielsen, and in the second time he appears, it's the episode you thought this episode was. Right. Because that's Mickey Dolenz's character then. Yes. So like they renamed Mickey Dolenz's character uh, from I think what was his name in uh, Norm to Gordy. Yes. Gordy, right. And that's and that, but I just remember he looks he looks the same. I mean, yeah, same guy. Um yeah. but uh yeah, they they're all they're all kind of middle aged and I was gonna I broke down middle aged and boring, which sounds rude, but they're like they're like comical. Oh, can you juice me some carrots? Like, oh Alan, yeah, you can't even have a beer. You have kids, you know. I'm like, come what are you, who are you guys? Like be your 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 dads, you can have a beer. Chill. I out. mean, unless their health is that bad. Which, if it is yeah if they're all like oh i'm all broken down and yeah because he goes on a, a thing about how he ripped off a fat free sticker from an angel food cake and put it oh, on a chocolate fudge so cake or something I mean, he's like that's how i cheat on my wife and like they all laugh at that like haha uh, that's it got dark for a hot sec when you thought he actually cheated on his wife yeah man that was rough um but they they're all even though they're they all seem to be kind of like long from the band they've all got their their guitars in their cars so they all do and like also while this happens uh Corey and sean run out dressed for the gig sean's kind of dressed like like run dmc sort of like a little bit yeah yeah he's got the flat brimmed hat and everything and it's just like it's just a really funny like they're they uh they clearly have like a big gig outfit for both of them yeah, it's it's funny that they they spent time, you know, picking out their outfits instead of coming up with a plan. Because this for me, this is like recurring nightmares I have had. Not necessarily of playing instruments, but I had a recurring nightmare for a long time of like needing to be in a play but not knowing my lines uh-huh. or anything like that and you're just standing on the stage hoping it'll just come to you or improving around everyone else. Yeah. And and that's a lot what like this is, right? They they they, but for real, they really are having to go backstage at this dance packed with girls and have no clue how to play instruments. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really fun. Just the whole sequence of like, oh, I love like the juxtaposition of like home with like Alan and the tongues and then like leading up to the performance for the exits, like seeing like you the first time we see like the school auditorium, you just see Feeny like sitting in the microphone being like, kids. Don't slouch. Like, it's like, just tell them have fun, but like, don't be like, don't do anything wrong. Like, and my <laughs> watching this, not this time around, I knew what happened this time, but the first time I ever saw this episode, my TV brain that was trying to think of what the plot was going to be, I was thinking, oh, they'll solve this by 
getting their dad and his friends to come play at the dance, which yeah. is what they should have done. If they had been paying attention when they walked downstairs, they should have been like, oh yeah, these guys, they can play. Why don't we just get them to do it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like it would make so much more sense. Cause I remember, I remember in my, I forget is the episode, the monkeys. That's the one where they perform at Chubby's, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. For the I always get the anniversary yeah. party. Yeah. Um, which I'm sure you're going to want to do that, that episode when we get to that episode. Uh, that's one of my favorite episodes. I yeah. love that one. <laughs> this is a really fun one. Like, because I remember like when, way right after I asked you, you do, like what episodes want to do this to, you were like, I want to do Band of the Run. And I'm like, oh, that's the Monkeys episode. And I'm like, oh no, this isn't. But it's like still, a, it's still a fun one. It's still, it's weird still one. fun though. But it's I, so weird. I remembered yeah. this one of being the one where they had to dance and then they didn't know how to play. That was the main thing that I remember. Yeah. But I, I keep getting them mixed up in my mind. I'm like, they don't know how to play, so they get the monkeys. But no, that's that's not what happens. Well, they get a monkey, but the monkey doesn't a play monkey. with them. Uh, yeah, and then like Sean and um, and Corey have like a, some kids come in that are like, oh, we'll play, but then you find out that they want money and they don't have money because uh, apparently Finney doesn't pay people with contracts, which that's kind of fucked up too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then Turner comes out. He's like, "Guys, are ready?" And Sean's like, "We can't play." Uh, and he's like, "Huh?" And Corey's like, "Because the turkey isn't the right kind of turkey that we wanted to have." <laughs> I don't know why Corey thinks going all diva would work. If he had just told Mr. Turner that he didn't know how to play, he'd be like, "Okay, we'll just put on the CD then." I also just love how like casually Turner just walks away. Yeah. And they're like, we're gonna we're gonna nail so you hear like Mr. Like, all right, kids ready for the exit. And like the <laughs> curtains open, you just see them both with turkey in their hands. Like, but <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. So um while they're while they're getting all nervous about this, uh Alan's band, they they're playing good loving by the rascals, yeah, and they're all good. Yeah, except for Alan, who's like he's fine but he seems a little offbeat, a little uncomfortable. I think he he either forgot that he wasn't that great or or just like was expecting all the other guys to not be that great anymore. Hard to say. It's also such a fascinating scene uh, where, because it's like a two minute long scene of them playing the music and you see Amy being happy and listening and Alan just like kind of going through the motions. Like I didn't realize how much Alan was not comfortable um, on this rewatch of this episode, but you're right. Like it's... you. Like it's it's so like fascinating like watching like actually real musicians play and then Alan like uh uh yeah I'm I'm, yeah, I'm playing too I'm, I'm playing still better than Corey and Sean yeah oh my god uh <laughs> I just love like how like Cor- like at the like right before they step up to the mic like, Corey's like we need to believe in ourselves we've got this if we believe in ourselves we can play the music and they go up to the microphones and like uh it's really funny because when the, the kid there's a kid in the front row that is all is the prince kid mm-hmm. i i was like that's prince kid he's there in the front row like just ready to rock out uh and see how this goes which is hilarious because he's like i'm out of here if we have yeah. to play music i'm out of here but i'm gonna watch you play music uh he's like kind of, that's oh, kind yeah. of like evil thing Still to going do to the dance yeah uh and then just like rile everyone up and then like he's okay he's a good hype man yeah good evening john adams hi he's good yeah. at that uh, like and Sean tries to run away, uh, and then like we get to their actual song, and he starts playing the, the name game song. Yeah, he calls out Sonia, and he's like, "Hey, what's your name?" And she goes, "You stink." He's like, "No, your name is Sonia. It's Sonia, right?" <laughs> <laughs> he tries to play the name game with Sonia, Sonia, Sonia Bononia. Like <laughs> now, it's a little bit unclear whether or not this was their only attempt at playing music or if they attempted any kind of other songs or something, because this isn't like two kids who aren't good at music. They literally don't know how to play their instruments. So it's not like they went up there and tried and then kind of failed. I don't need the way they talk about it. It's like, Oh, were we really that bad? Like what? Yeah. You didn't play unless they tried and like played Mary had a little lamb or something. Yeah. Like, I think they were just too concerned about trying to find people that weren't good enough to make them seem ungood look like not good looking right. with their instruments, but also they were too busy trying to look cool with their like they got everything about the band right, but the band, right? Exactly, yeah. exactly. 
uh, but they had, yeah, they had a cool look, cool name. Yeah. And then like we cut back to uh, the house and the tongues are leaving and everyone's like, oh, this is great. We got to do this again. We got to do this great. And, and now it's kind of rushing them out the door. Yeah, um, like, goodbye. Okay. Yeah. G- goodbye. Get out of here. And like, he like, yeah, he's like, he realizes he was, he got bad. Uh, and then Amy says he was never that good. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, oh, but you know, it was the whole package. You looked so cute up there with your little yeah. outfit and your little guitar, and <laughs> and it looked like you were having fun. And I love Alan P. Like, I all this time I thought you you loved me for my music, but you just loved me for me, huh? <laughs> And which is oh that's great I love yeah that so much. it's so great uh so of course we're we're like i said gonna have that echoed in a minute um yeah because uh cory and sean dejected sitting on the stage <sighs> and cory oh great moment oh, he's like God. mr yes. feeney is gonna come over here and be like mr hunter mr <laughs> matthews you should have learned to not you know to be yourself and don't pretend and whatever but feeney walks up to them mr hunter mr matthews <clears throat> And he just kind of snorts and walks just away. Laughs, it's like, great. Uh, it's so it's such funny. a funny moment. I also love like right before that happens, like they're talking about like they're they're like recounting what the show is like for them and like how Sean's like, I think Sean mentions how they kept screaming the exits, but they were actually trying to get to the exits. Um, and it just it was so great. And then Topanga shows up and she and Corey's like, Why why are you still here? There's no reason for you to still be here. Uh, and she says, like, Jeremy wants to go to the uh, to like hang out with the other kids, and she wanted to be with Corey. Um, and she, uh, Corey asks if she wants to dance, and he goes to the record player, or to the tape deck, and then he puts in a tape, and it's that album that Feeney was talking about uh, from that reggae album. And <laughs> this part made me laugh so hard. I I don't know why it made me laugh that hard, but literally, like you hear like reggae music happening, and the guy is like, "Hey." What's your name? And then, the guy, and then you're George Feeney. Like, well, George, I've got a song for you. Who plays the name game? Oh. Oh, it's so funny. It's so good. It's so it's, good. It's so great. Uh, and then we're in our credit scene, and then we find out that uh, Alan's trying to give Corey his guitar, and Corey's like, "No, I don't want this." And they keep like passing back and forth, and then Eric appears and. Alan's like, here's guitar. And Eric's like, cool. And he puts on like an amazing like slash style lick of guitar lick. And that's the end of the episode. Yeah. And he's like, nah, I don't want this. It's just so good. <laughs> classic, classic Eric would it's be so just a, a guitar prodigy having never played before. <laughs> oh, classic. Oh. It's it's great. Um, it's a really fun episode. It goes by super fast. The whole thing is really just like one plot. It's it's not particularly deep. There's not a whole lot of like no. super. I mean, I don't even know what the lesson is here. We don't end on any kind of like big moral. I think the lesson is probably like, hey, don't don't pretend to know how to play instruments when you don't. I mean, every single moralistic character in the episode is either their funny version or having a very like having a big part in the B plot. Right. So yeah, like the closest. Yeah, I mean, the closest thing is like just love who you are. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sure. That's kind of what uh what Amy says there. In yeah. Topanga. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anything else we want to talk about before we get into our superlatives and stuff? Um. Just just how cute this was and how fun and and lighthearted and it's a really great watch. I uh, I'm always really excited to talk about Boy Meets World and do the watching of it because it goes by so fast, but. I forgot how good some of these like early season two episodes were because yeah. I think I thought like that a lot of the lighthearted bits I mean, not that the show isn't always lighthearted but it definitely gets more serious and gets older and gets more about the dating and all that kind of thing but it's so fun to have these plots that are just like Corey and Sean being at school trying to trying to meet girls and getting up to shenanigans it's just yeah. it's great loved it yeah it's just it's just a fun like reset episode even though like the yeah. last episode like the last episode was a little bit heavier because it had to deal with it was like the up uh, it was uh the sex size and videotape episode where they would like talk about love and mm-hmm. people think that Corey and Tamina slept together the night before so it's nice to have this like it's kind of a good palate cleanser episode in a fun right. way 
like, like it's always fun when you have a, a guest star episode. Like, yes. yeah. All right, let's uh, talk about why well, Betsy Randall's the greatest human mom in the world. A one, a one, a one, two, three, four. Betsy Randall's the best TV mom. Yay. Yeah, I mean, like we said, like, if there's a moral in this episode, it really comes from her since Feeney sidesteps it. And it's it's just be yourself. You don't need to be, like, great at a particular talent in order to have people care about you. And um, she really is channeling just, like, real mom vibes this whole episode when he brings the, uh, the aunt in and he's like the people at the garage sale didn't know what they were getting rid of. And she's like, mm, I bet their wife <laughs> did. Like that was, yeah. that was so great. Just kind of the whole way through, you knew that she was like, could see this coming, could see that Alan was going to have this realization. And she was probably thinking like, shoot, I thought we were done with this whole band nonsense, but, but she's there. She's supportive. Yeah. She's loving, but she's also like, not gonna lie to your face and coddle you. It's a really strong Amy episode. Yeah. Like, literally she's she's in a lot of the episode like she's in the whole b-plot like mm-hmm. she's in literally half i'd say like that b-plot's eight minutes of the episode maybe probably um, probably close to that yeah and like she's there she's being that sweet genuine good loving mother and wife that, that she is and like i also love like how you kind of like the when the camera is going around during the, like two minute long song like of singing of good love like how um how like the camera like lingers on her alone. She saw like she's enjoying herself, like like genuinely enjoying herself. And then you see Alan like having trouble playing guitar. And it's just, I don't know, it's it's fun that when we get an episode where Amy is like there for fun. Right. Yes, exactly. She's there for fun. She doesn't need to be, uh, she can kind of just sort of lead people into into that moral without really needing to like do any kind of um I'm trying to think like action herself like she's not she's not yeah. trying to instruct someone she's just sort of reminding them of who they are which I like yeah I very much agree with that all right let's get the ep- episode MVP uh this was tough for me honestly um, it is tough if you're I'm, looking for a smaller character yeah I, I think this was he's only in like two scenes but I loved everything Mr. Turner said in this episode. Um, he only says a couple of things. He's com- Corey compares him when he's saying, hey, you carry around that helmet to look tough, your motorcycle helmet, and I carry yeah. around this uh, um, guitar case. And it's, it's kind of the same thing. And Mr. Turner's like, I carry around this helmet because I need it to protect my head. What is that <laughs> guitar case doing? Yeah. And Corey's like, protects my sandwich that and then (laughs) when he forces them on the stage and at the end when he tells them uh you know if you guys don't show up to class on monday i'll understand so it really small probably not the actual mvp but like the the behind the scenes like really tiny character just stood out to me it's actually like the first time like i've got so many issues with mr turner he's like one of my least favorite characters in the whole series really i do not like mr turner like i like, love mr turner i so like my big issues with mr turner is i like when he's teaching only huh um and a little bit of the of uh, the stuff with sean towards the end of his time but like i don't know like, i just like like because i don't like because like i don't i guess maybe because i associate him so much with eli Who's like the most wasted character in the history of the show? In my personal, in my he definitely is. You're yeah, right. like because they gave Eli so like Turner has fun, like so you'd be like, hey, Turner has an outside life too. I, I don't know, but this is a really good Turner episode. I will give you that. Uh, the thing I like about Turner is that he's he he's a teacher but he's also sort of playing that like older brother kind of role to yeah. them which can be fun to have because it's nice to see the just someone contrary to Feeney in their lives in a in a teacher adult perspective who's not not a, a relative so um yeah. that's why i think he's fun but like he's very i think the, yeah the worst parts about him have to do with how he and um Eli end up being kind of too similar and then they kind of just like ah eh, well we've got Mr. Turner so we don't need Eli when they yeah. developed that character separately yeah I mean I do love Eli for the fact that he's like the only POC in like in the show until Angela pretty much until Angela comes pretty much but yeah. like um I think for me my MVP is gonna be Alan this episode um he it's, was good. A, it's a really fun Alan episode like you like he has a full arc in this episode like oh my god music yeah, band. Oh my god, I'm terrible. And then like, it's just 
it's really nice when we get these uh William Russ uh gets to be goofy episodes mm-hmm. and like excuse me and, like be like a very cliche dad like like because he is like my dad in this episode like my yeah. dad is an ex musician so like it's that thing of like seeing my dad like my dad he like recorded for YouTube like his band getting back like a reunion for his band and it was like it's something he has so much love for and i'm like it's really cool like seeing that uh but yeah yeah i i think that he definitely deserves it um he's the one who probably learns an even more valuable lesson than Corey did he gets Uh to have some fun he gets to relive some of his younger days uh and and reconnect and probably realize like hey maybe i've been glorifying this past and and need to concentrate more on the life i have now yeah yeah awesome um i yeah those are mvps uh i have our plugs for you i know like since we're wrapping up uh yeah Unless there's anything else we want to talk about in the episode. Or no, I think that's pretty much it that I have for the episode. Nice. It was great. Uh, so uh, give us your place. I know you're so busy. and <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, just, you know, doing things in the podcasting world. Um, like you mentioned earlier, podcasting about revenge. Now that revenge is back for season five and it's already been renewed for season six, which is just absurd <laughs> but um so yeah me and uh kirsten mckinnis podcast about revenge over on kowski cast which is cow with a k and otherwise you can find me pretty much everywhere at frail mary i've been doing some twitch streaming recently playing like older nostalgic games so right Old now we're playing, we're playing um the star wars phantom menace playstation one game yes right i now, remember that game oh my god yes. which is one of my favorites it is hard to look at but because it's just so dark and choppy, but that's been fun playing that. And then I've been playing some games from um, the Nintendo Entertainment System, like OG NES games, oh, particularly so this game called Mick Kids, which is a McDonald's based game about like the uh, Hamburglar. And so it's really fun. I vaguely uh, recall that game. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's great. So that I've been doing a lot of that recently. If, if anyone's interested in checking that out on uh, yeah, twitch.tv slash frail Mary, but awesome. that, and then I'm sure, sure I'll do RHAP stuff for big, Brother Canada, which is right around the corner. Yeah, I mean, like they just announced the cast uh, yesterday yep. uh, in our time. I mean, this will drop on Tuesday, which means the show will have started by then, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. So awesome, exciting. Uh, my plugs quickly at Mark Levy eighty five. If you want to tweet at me, uh, if you want to email the show, Mark Meets World at Gmail dot com. Uh, my schedule is weird right now just because I don't know when work starts back up again. Uh, hopefully soon crossing fingers but you know i'm still doing mark talk most days of the week and my brand steals uh mary thank you so much for being here this really means a lot to me thanks for having me yeah and i will see you guys next week bye